Good morning and welcome to Mount Pleasant United Methodist Church in Roanoke, Virginia. This is our online worship service and so delighted to have you sharing with us today. Today we join with Christians around the world in celebrating Trinity Sunday and we begin with our call to worship from Psalm 8 and I invite you to join in that psalm now. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in the whole earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. You have made sure that children and infants praise you. Their praise is a wall that stops the talk of your enemies. I think about the heavens. I think about what your fingers have created. I think about the moon and stars that you have set in place. What are human beings that you think about them? What is the son of man that you take care of him? You have made them a little lower than the angels. You placed on them a crown of glory and honor. You made human beings rule over everything your hands created. You put everything under their control. They rule over all flocks and herds and over the wild animals. They rule over the birds in the sky and over the fish in the ocean. They rule over everything that swims in the oceans. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in the whole earth. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, it is your grace that enables us, your servants, to confess a true and living faith. It is your grace that enables us to see and name the glory of the eternal Trinity. It is also your grace and the power of your divine majesty that enables us to worship you in complete unity. Mighty God, we pray that you would keep us strong and steadfast in this faith and worship, and bring us at last to see you in your one eternal glory, O Father. For with the Son and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Join with me now in singing this beautiful Trinity Sunday hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today, in addition to celebrating Trinity Sunday, United Methodists have observed this day as a special Sunday called Peace with Justice Sunday. It's a day to remember our call to seek peaceful solutions, to create and support ministries that lift up God's peace, and to learn about our efforts for peace and justice around the world. Our church reminds us to love our enemies, to seek justice in all things, to serve as reconcilers of conflict. Special offerings are sometimes given for Peace with Justice Sunday, and you can find a place online to share your offering if you like. We'll share that information with you. A lot of different opportunities for Peace with Justice ministries take place. One that I read about this week that has been supported in years past is called the Alaska Innocence Project, which has the church work in partnership with people who were wrongly convicted in the state of Alaska. And um, I was surprised to see that the, the leader of this ministry is in the church that my um, cousin attends in Anchorage, Alaska. Um, what, a, what a great connection. And all of us um, certainly would, be, um, would have our heart join in together in, in lifting up the importance of this ministry and whenever someone is wrongfully convicted, whether in Alaska or Virginia or wherever. So keep ministries of peace with justice in your prayers. Together, let us pray. Lord, we thank you that we indeed are able to enjoy the blessings of peace um, so often. We thank you that, that justice has been a reality in our lives, and yet we know there are times that peace is denied and there are times that justice is denied. And we thank you that we're part of a faith that looks at situations of injustice and doesn't just shrug our shoulders but, but digs in. And we pray for brothers and sisters in the faith who stand tall and working for that which is right and true those who lived in the past, those who are at work now, and those you'll be raising up in the future. Bless us and bless these ministries of peace with justice. And now as we turn to the scriptures, we pray that you would open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture is read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. For our first scripture reading today, we share the beautiful story of creation that comes to us from chapter 1 of Genesis and the first few verses of chapter 2. Listen as if you've never heard this story before. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. Then God said, let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And that is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heavens. God called the space sky. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the second day. Then God said, Let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place, so dry ground may appear. And that is what happened. 
God called the dry ground land and the waters seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land sprout with vegetation, every sort of seed-bearing plant, and trees that grow seed-bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. And that is what happened. The land produced vegetation, all sorts of seed-bearing plants and trees with seed-bearing fruit. Their seeds produced plants and trees of the same kind, and God saw that it was good. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the third day. Then God said, Let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, days, and years. Let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth. And that is what happened. God made two great lights, the larger one to govern the day and the smaller one to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky to light the earth, to govern the day and night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And evening passed and morning came, marking the fourth day. Then God said, Let the waters swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that scurries and swarms in the water and every sort of bird, each producing offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply. Let the fish fill the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And evening passed and morning came, marking the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind, livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground, and wild animals. And that is what happened. God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock and small animals, each able to produce offspring of the same kind, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Then God said, Look, I've given you every seed-bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. And I've given every green plant as food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky and the small animals that scurry along the ground, everything that has life. And that is what happened. Then God looked over all he had made and he saw that it was very good. And evening passed and morning came, marking the sixth day. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, so he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. This is the account of the creation of the heavens and the earth. And for our New Testament scripture reading, we turn to John chapter 7, these three short verses, verse 37 through 39. On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given, because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. Thanks be to God for the gift of his word. So Trinity Sunday is a good time to remember the high points of the Christian year that we've celebrated since last fall when we began the first Sunday of Advent. The season of the Christian year has some special times that concentrate our basic teachings of the faith, and they really come in two waves, a small wave 
that begins in Advent and a big wave that begins in Lent. Let's just remember what that, what that means. Um, near the end of November or the first of December, we have the four Sundays of Advent that talk about the preparation that the people went through for the coming of the Messiah and our preparation for Jesus' second coming. And then, of course, we celebrate the Feast of Christmas, the Nativity, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God come to the earth in the flesh. And then the follow-up, pushes outward from that, the waiting, the celebration, and then the pushing outward, which comes with the festival of the epiphany, of the light made manifest to the world. Then we kind of have what I call a green season. The colors of the cloth are green while we while we talk about the implications of all of that and what it means to hold on to those beliefs. Then we have the big wave that comes beginning with Ash Wednesday, the 40 days leading up to Easter there, the preparation, spiritual discipline, renewing our personal faith, but also remembering the walk of Jesus that led not only to glory, but also to suffering. That, of course, climaxes with Holy Week, the greatest week of the Christian year, Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, the night of Jesus' Last Supper, Good Friday, the day of Jesus' death, the festival of Easter, the resurrection from the dead, which we celebrate then and leads up to the outgrowth Pentecost, which we celebrated last Sunday, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And today, Trinity Sunday kind of wraps it all up and ties it up together. Then we have another green season, a long green season that lasts until the end of November or the 1st of December. When we started over again, every year, the whole story is told. Now, what about Trinity? Imagine you were giving a children's message on the Trinity. How would you explain this great mystery? Children have spent their whole life learning the difference between three and one. Three is different from one. Three minus one is, leaves two there. But here we are in church trying to say something can be three and one at the same time. How do we do this? There's all kind of little comparisons that have been come up with for children and adults to try to explain this mystery. The problem is that the comparisons and the examples and the analogies end up robbing the Trinity of the mystery. They try to make it simple, and in doing so, we lose it. Actually, there's even a bigger problem. They lead us into teaching that um, goes directly against what we learn about the Trinity. Let me give you some examples. A few years ago, a Lutheran teacher created a hilarious video, a cartoon that depicts St. Patrick, the great Christian leader in Ireland, trying to teach humble shepherds about the faith. And they have a question about the Trinity. Suffice it to say that every way St. Patrick attempts to explain it, the shepherds come back and say, oh no, Patrick, you're wrong. Here's what we came up with. By the way, you can find that video on YouTube. It's called St. Patrick's Bad Analogies. So the first thing Patrick does and says, well, the Trinity is like water, what we would call H2O. You can find water in three different forms. Liquid, water that you drink, ice, frozen water, and vapor, like steam. They're all different, but they're all H2O. Now that sounds great. Normally, I'd say that's one of the best examples you can come up with, right? The simple shepherds, though, remind him that that is actually like a false teaching, which said that God is not three distinct persons, but actually is one person revealing himself in three different forms. That's not quite it. Well, Patrick goes on and says, well... Maybe you can say the Trinity is like the sun because you have the star itself, but then you have the sun's light, and then you also have the sun's heat. That sounds pretty good, right? Not three stars, but one star, but the star itself, light, and heat. The shepherds remind St. Patrick that's even worse because what that winds up doing is putting the the light and the heat as being um, much subordinate to the actual sun itself. And so in this case, Christ and the Spirit are way, way down in second and third place. They are creations of the Father, not really one in nature with him at all, just in the way in which heat and light are not really the sun itself. They're just effects of the sun. So you end up with one God, but you don't end up with three persons. You just have one person 
with two additional effects. Well, as the video goes on, next St. Patrick holds up a shamrock, and the shamrock has indeed been used as a symbol of the Trinity because those three leaves of the one little um, green plant um, were one way in which the Trinity was, was taught there. But boom, we have another false teaching because Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are here different parts of God, each composing one-third of God there. So, so again, you have the unity of the Trinity, but you don't have the distinctiveness of the three persons. It's just one-third, one-third, one-third. Another example St. Patrick shares is one maybe you've heard before, how one person, one man, can be called husband, can be called father, and can become employer. You have one man, but you have three types of relationships. Now, once again, that sounds like now we've nailed it here. Isn't that a great example? Because it's not three people. This one person is the husband. Let's say Bill the husband, Bill the father, Bill the employer. That get it? Of course not. If you stop and think about it, this one may be even worse than the others because some of us relate to Bill as a husband, some of us as a father, some of us as an employer there. With the Trinity, though we indeed have three distinct persons of the one God, all of us relate to all three. God is not my Father and your Spirit, but rather God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for all of us. Well, Children's messages have come up with all kinds of options. I've heard the one about the egg, that you have one egg, but in the egg, you have the egg yolk, the egg white, and the egg shell. I heard a story about a pastor actually doing that and broke the egg shell and out came a double yoked egg. That messed up the whole story. Well, unlike the shamrock, at least you have some differences here. I mean, the shell and the white and the yolk are extremely different, but still... That just doesn't cut it. What do we make of the Trinity? I'll be honest and say one of my misunderstandings across the year was to think of the Trinity like a three-act play, that God revealed himself over time, that God was revealed as Father and Creator at the dawn of creation when the heavens and the earth were created, that God was revealed as Jesus on that night in Bethlehem when the Word became flesh, and then God was revealed as the Spirit on the day of Pentecost. So since Pentecost, we've had all three. But that too was a mistake. I wasn't getting it. Because our understanding of the Trinity is clearly that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit have been the unity of the one God since before the world was created. Now certainly we can see those three signal points at which the three persons were most clearly revealed, creation, Christmas, and Pentecost. But God has been three in one since before the first human being drew his breath. So how did that little cartoon of St. Patrick and the shepherds eventually turn out? Well, at every turn, the simple shepherds unravel the suggestions of wise St. Patrick until at the end, this is what Patrick comes up with. Patrick says, Fine, the Trinity is a mystery which cannot be comprehended by human reason, but is understood only by faith, and is best confessed in the words of the Creed, which state that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the three nor dividing the one. And we're compelled by the Christian truth to confess that each distinct person, each of the three, is God and Lord, and that the deity of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit is one, equal in glory, co-equal in majesty. Well, in the cartoon, the shepherds look for a moment at Patrick, and then they say, why didn't you just say that, Patrick? So as fun as they are, shamrocks and eggs and water, ice and vapor might need to be put aside for today. And instead, we, like the shepherds and like St. Patrick, are simply left with the awe and wonder and mystery of God, who is greater than any of us could ever imagine. And we ask God for the faith to be able 
to worship him. Whenever we hear the stories of Jesus, we don't just admire what Jesus meant in the past. We know that Jesus is alive and we worship him. He walks with us. He talks with us. He tells us that we are his own. Whenever we experience the power of the Holy Spirit moving in our midst today, we remember that Pentecost was not just a one-off over and done with, but the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is ours as well. And whenever, like the psalmist in Psalm 8, whenever we look up into the night sky and see the moon and the stars that our Father God set into place, and we feel so very small, we can remember those beautiful words that God placed on our heads a crown of glory and honor and a very important place of serving within his creation. And we simply say, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Let us pray. Lord, help us to simply rest in the mystery to try to quit analyzing, to try to quit over-explaining, to try to quit taking something profound and making it simple or simplistic. And just remember the beauty of the three in one and how you are much greater than any human mind can comprehend, yet you have revealed to us your word. And so we can walk with your son, Jesus we can open our lives to the power of the Holy Spirit. And every time we look at the beauty of nature, the majesty of the universe, we too can say, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. All our prayers this day, we pray in the name of our Savior Jesus as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today in our in-person worship, we celebrate Holy Communion. And that's one thing we don't do online. We don't hold up the bread to the video screen and, and ask for that to become the body and blood of Christ. But we are delighted to share communion with you in your home or to make it available in whatever way we can. So if you can't be with us in person, let me know. Wherever you live, I'll find a way for you to receive Holy Communion. Be sure and leave a comment. Send us a message. We'll be happy to share that in such a way that it'll be a blessing to you. Thanks again for sharing with us in worship. Um, we appreciate the love and the gifts that you share, your regular offerings um, that are given, whether it's a check in the mail or using our online giving portal. Thank you so much. That's such a blessing to us. It helps keep the ministry of our church strong in these sometimes tough and changing times. May God bless and be with you. I invite you to join in our closing song, which reminds us of the beauty of the creation for the beauty of the earth.
Best gift divine to the world so freely given for that great, great love of mine, peace on earth and joy in heaven. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful. So